Sports eyes are on the skies tonight in southern Manitoba. As flooding brings much of the province to a halt, forecasters are keeping a close eye on an incoming storm tonight with the potential to raise water levels even higher. The province says as much as 50 millimeters of rain is expected to hit parts of the province, in some areas even more. Much of the rain is expected to arrive tomorrow. The province says it will impact flows and levels in most rivers and creeks, with the highest impact likely in western and southeast Manitoba. Flood warnings are in place for many communities tonight, including for the Winnipeg River from the Ontario border to Lake Winnipeg. Flows along that stretch of water are expected to break a record set in 2014. Throughout the Red River Valley, winds of up to 90 kilometers an hour are being predicted, which the province says could cause water levels in flooded areas to rise by up to a foot. Swollen rivers and overland flooding are already closing roads and forcing evacuations. In Morris, with more rain on the way, it's leaving those fighting back against the water weary. CTV's Jeff Keel was there today, where residents are bracing for the Red River to crest. Standing on the South Dyke in Morris, Melvin Eadle looks out at his farmyard in the distance. Like a lot of properties, it's surrounded by water. A two-acre two, two, two acre yard that's like an island, you see. It's just kilometres away, but Eadle has to take a short boat ride, then drive an hour to go to town because of flooding. I'm sick and tired of climbing in out boats. I'm, got, I'm not young no more, you know, I'm getting old. An overland flood warning continues for southern Manitoba, with more rain expected. The flooded Red River has washed out roads, driveways, and there are 50 homes around Morris evacuated. Coming up like five or six inches, uh, you know, a day. Howard Bergstresser is staying in Morris with friends because the road to his home started disappearing a week ago. He is checking up on his house to make sure it's dry. Well, just because you never know if the water's going to get in the basement or a pump's going to fail. Or... There is some good news. Local leaders believe the crest may be here in Morris, but with more rain in the forecast, the question now is how long will the water stay? You know, we reassured ourselves that we've been through this before, but this has been an exceptionally long flood. And they worry this is taking a toll on residents. Some people can't handle it. I mean, the mental aspect of it, the stress. Plus, when will farmers be able to seed and when will Highway 75 reopen? You know, sooner they open is better. Two detours in the area are costing truckers time and money. Morris is blocked off on both ends by dikes to protect the community as water is flowing over Highway 75, so traffic through town is slow. The revenue dropped dramatically, you would say 75-80%. For Melvin Edel, he hopes this flood will be the last. It's number 15 for him since 1948. I tell you, when I look at the water, I get sick to the stomach, I don't see no water again. Jeff Keel, CTV News, Morris. And you just heard Jeff say local leaders are optimistic. The crest in Morris has already happened. However, tonight in its latest update, the province says the Red River at Morris is expected to crest between May 16th and the 18th. That's this coming Monday and Wednesday. The timing of the Red River's crest and how high the water will peak varies across the Red River Valley. In Emerson, the crest isn't expected until at least May 15th. It's projected at more than 790 feet. In Morris, the projected crest level is about 10 feet lower at 780 feet. In St. Agath, the crest is expected between the 17th and 19th at 772 feet. And here in Winnipeg, the crest is expected between May 14th and 15th. 15th at 19 feet. Floodwaters are receding in Peguis First Nation tonight after historically high levels forced many people out. But with more rain in the forecast, the community isn't feeling any relief. CDB's Taylor Brock was there. Peguis First Nation resident Cheryl Thompson stayed behind to help save homes in her community, and she also needs help. Well, nobody's been here to check on me or to see if I needed anything, so it, it's very hard. Thompson says she is down to her last jug of water. Her flooded yard means she cannot use her well. Her basement flooded and the water kept rising into her kitchen, and for a time she lost power. And this is the smell, I guess it's the smell that starts to get me. Her once sorted beads float to the top of her flooded basement. Thompson says her Sundance drums, pipes and buffalo rope all are underwater. So my bi biggest concern in my lower bedrooms and my laundry room 
is the uh, mold issues. Volunteers are sandbagging her home and will begin pumping the water out of her basement. I say it's 10 times worse than what happened in Lake St. Martin than before. This is like nothing I've seen. He says they are racing against the clock, watching for more rainfall. A volunteer on the other side of Pegwis is working on his birthday to sandbag homes. It's my hometown, you know, and my friends and family are here and always welcome to come back to do what's right. Pegwis Chief Glenn Hudson is expecting cleanup and further flood protections to cost $100 million. It's very uh, gut-wrenching, I guess, when it comes down to uh, uh, seeing these homes, seeing our community in the shape that it is. The chief says two evacuated residents, an elder and a young woman, have died away from home. He says one evacuated home burned down as it was surrounded by flood water. Oh, those things are very real in terms of whether they're going to actually be back home. To us, Pegwis is home. Each day, you just keep your spirits up and do what you got to do to get through it. Taylor Brock, CTV News, Pegwis First Nation. Tonight, roughly 40% of Pegwis First Nation residents have evacuated, close to 2,000 people. They're staying in hotels in Winnipeg, Selkirk, and Brandon. Some people are moving from Winnipeg to Brandon because their hotel rooms were previously booked. It's not known when people will be able to return home. From Pegwis First Nation to the other side of Lake Winnipeg now, where people who were hoping to kick off the camping and cottage season this weekend in Nopaming Provincial Park are out of luck. Roads in the park, which is located about 200 kilometers northeast of Winnipeg, have been ravaged by flooding. It's prompted the province to close campgrounds, trails and canoe routes. CTV's Josh Crabb has more. Water rushes through the Bird River Valley just outside the boundary of Nopaming Provincial Park. Last summer, forest fires prompted evacuations. This spring, flooding has ravaged road access to this wilderness destination, popular with cottagers, campers and canoeists who are being advised to stay away from the area until further notice. It's one extreme to another. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to be camping on the, the long weekend up there. Like the roads are washed out, there's no access to cabins. Jim Oliver does work at the nearby Tanko Mine, but he can't get there right now because roads are washed out. No work, no income. <laughs> you know, it's just, I just came from talking to a buddy on the corner. I'm going to go drive a truck for him for a little bit till things pick up up here again. Campgrounds in Nopaming were set to open Friday, but flooding has forced the closure of the park, all backcountry canoe routes and campsites until further notice. The province says campgrounds will remain closed until at least June 2nd. No one from the parks department was available for an interview. The Manitoba government says in a statement it understands the frustration of some campers and is monitoring the situation to ensure parks, trails and campgrounds can open safely as soon as possible. The Windsock Hunting and Fishing Lodge in the northern part of Nopaming Provincial Park on Long Lake has also been hit hard by rising lake levels. Owner Donna Hastings says the flooding filled their boathouse with more than a meter of lake water, something she's never seen in the 36 years she's run the place. We've been threatened with forest fires, of course, but never a flood. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time we've ever experienced anything like this in our lives. Hastings says it comes just as the lodge was finally able to start welcoming out-of-country guests after business took a hit during the pandemic. Highway 304 to the lodge remains open, but she says there's no way out to the south on Highway 314 because roads got washed out. The roads are very soupy and a lot of the culverts have given out. I think they want to keep everything, everyone out of the park just in case more of it, you know, more culverts um, blow mm -hmm. and uh, just for everybody's safety. With more rain only expected to add to the problem, Oliver thinks it may take a while before he can get back to his job site. It's going to delay it a long time. <laughs> Josh Crabb, CTV News, near Nopaming Provincial Park. And tonight, the province says all backcountry canoe routes have also been closed in the Manigatogan River Provincial Park. Several other campgrounds have been affected by flooding, including in Whiteshell Provincial Park. The province says reservation holders and seasonal site holders are being contacted and their fees will be refunded if their site is affected by a closure.